So what we have here is x being defined in terms of t and y being de defined in terms of t. And then if you were to plot over all of the t values, you get a pretty cool plot just like this. So you, know, you try t equals zero, figure out what x and y are. t is equal to one, figure out what x and y are, and all the other t's. And then you get this pretty cool looking graph. But our, the goal in this video isn't just to appreciate the coolness of graphs or curves defined by parametric equations, but we actually want to do some calculus, and in particular, we want to find the derivative we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x the derivative of y with respect to x when t when t is equal to negative one third. and if you are inspired i encourage you to pause and, and try to solve this and i am about to do it with you if you, in, in case you you already did or, or you just want me to all right so the key is is well how do you find the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of y with respect to x when they're both defined in terms of t. And the key realization is the derivative of y with respect to x, with respect to x, is going to be equal to, is going to be equal to the derivative of y with respect to t over the derivative of x with respect to t. If you were to view these differentials as numbers, well, this would actually work out, mat work out mathematically. Now, uh, it gets a little bit non-rigorous when you start to do that, but if you thought of it that, it's an easy way of thinking about why this actually might make sense. The derivative of something versus something else is equal to the derivative of y with respect to t over x with respect to t. All right, so how does that help us? Well, we can figure out the derivative of x with respect to t and derivative of y with respect to t. The derivative of x, with respect to t is just going to be equal to, let's see, the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside, it's going to be two sine, whoops, derivative of sine is cosine, two cosine of one plus three t times the derivative of the inside with respect to t. So that's going to be derivative of one is just zero. Derivative of three t with respect to t is three. So times, Three, that's the derivative of x with respect to t. I just use a chain rule here. Derivative of the outside, two sine of something with respect to the inside. So derivative of this outside, two sine of something with respect to one plus three t is that right over there. And then derivative of the inside with respect to t is just our three. Now the derivative of y with respect to t is a little bit more straightforward. Derivative of y with respect to t, we just apply the power rule here. Three times two is six t to the three minus one power, six t squared. So this is going to be equal to six t squared, six t squared over, well we have the two times the three, so we have six times cosine of one plus three t. And then our sixes cancel out, and we are left with, we are left with t squared over cosine of one plus three t. And if we care when t is equal to negative one third, when t is equal to negative one third, this is going to be equal to, well, this is going to be equal to negative one third squared, negative one third squared over, over, over the cosine of one plus three times negative one third is negative one. So it's one plus negative one, so it's the cosine of zero. And the cosine of zero is just going to be one. So this is going to be equal to positive, positive one ninth. And let's see if we can visualize what's going on here. So let me draw a little table here. So, so I'm gonna plot, I'm gonna think about t and x and y. So t and x and y. So when t is equal to negative one third, well our x is going to be, this is going to be sine of zero, so our x is going to be zero. And our y is going to be what? Two over, or negative two over 27. So we're talking about, we are talking about the point zero comma negative two over 27. So that is that point right over there. So that's the point where we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line. And it's telling us that that slope is one ninth. That slope is one ninth. So if we move, I guess one way to think about it is if we move four, one, two, three, four and a half 
we're going to move up half. So if I wanted to draw the tangent line right there, it would look something like something like that. Something, something, something like that. Let's see if we go one, two, three, four and a half. So yeah, just like uh, that is pretty close. So that's what we just figured out. We figured out that the slope of the tangent line right at that point is one ninth. So it's not only neat to look at, but I guess somewhat useful.